Hey everyone, today we are going to cover ranch neighborhoods. So if you've been dreaming of some property with a little bit of land, whether you want one or two acres, or maybe you want a hundred, then this video is for you. We're going to cover some neighborhoods, maintenance, tips, values, and more. Colin and I got to enjoy the ranch life growing up. About half the time we lived with our dad on nearly a couple of acres and we had chickens, we had other farm animals, we had a garden, yada, yada, yada. And Colin, he still loves chickens. <laughs> and I love grapevines and I have a few on my property that I still can't figure out what to do with. <laughs> But our favorite thing about ranch properties is helping you all find the ranch property of your dreams. So let's start with the most important part, location. So these neighborhoods that we're going to talk about are really just areas in our county since most ranch areas aren't really necessarily in an HOA or any kind of real neighborhood. Although there are a couple of gated neighborhoods with large parcels, but we'll cover, cover those in a different video. That'll be one a little bit more about luxury properties instead of like the typical ranch lifestyle. Okay, so first up, we are going to talk about Atascadero. So when thinking of Atascadero and ranches, the first thing that comes to mind is South Atascadero. This is where you're going to see most of your horses, other 4-H projects, and what you would typically expect for a ranch neighborhood. The land is rolling to flat and really conducive to that type of use. Atascadero isn't one of the bigger areas for vineyards, but you will see some of those here and there in South Atascadero as well. Values in Atascadero for your little ranch or ranchette are going to be starting in the 700s for something that will need some work on maybe an acre or two, and they're going to climb all the way up to over 2 million depending on what the property has to offer. Most acreage properties in Atascadero are going to be on the smaller side of acreage, sometimes one or two acres, but it's pretty common to see a three to a five acre parcel in Atascadero. There are also some areas along the riverbed on the east side of Atascadero that have a really similar feel to the south side of Atascadero. But most of our clients that contact us about moving to Paso Robles Wine Country that end up purchasing in Atascadero go for the west side. The west side has more hills, so you get more views. It's also a little more forested with lots of oak trees and wildlife and a little less of the farm activities, although you will find some, some farm animals and whatnot over on the west side too. We have recently represented three different buyers that contacted us about moving to Paso Robles Wine Country and wound up purchasing on the west side of Atascadero. They all three purchased a parcel in that three to five acre range and they are loving it. So next up, let's talk Creston. So Creston's anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes from Atascadero or Paso. And the lots are generally gonna be quite a bit larger out there. You'll get lots all the way, you know, over 100 plus acres. You know, 20 to 40 is pretty common, but they get big. Uh, you're not going to find like a decent house on a big lot for less than a million most likely. And some recent closings have been approaching that $3 million mark. The property in this video that you're watching now sold for $1 million exactly, was over 50 acres and had two houses on it. But keep in mind that this property was 15 minutes past the town of Creston, 35 minutes to the nearest grocery store. So the further away you get from town, the better prices are gonna get, the closer you get to town, higher prices are going to get. So next up, we're going to cover Paso Robles, right here in Paso Robles. Most of the ranch properties are going to be outside of town here. They're going to be up in the west side hills or they're going to be out on the east side of town. But we do have some one acre parcels right in town. So you could make yourself a little mini ranchette here in town. When you head out west, you're going to find mostly larger parcels. Five acres and up typically and all the way up and over a hundred, of course. Whereas on the east side, there are a few neighborhoods that are one and two acre parcels. And you'll find the most affordable ranch living over on the east side. Areas like Geneseo and Jardine, which aren't really neighborhoods, but we all use that word like it is a neighborhood. We all call everything off Jardine Road and everything off Geneseo Road right by their road name. And those properties you might see something that is a small three bedroom, two bath in the 600s. 
probably needs a little work at that price, but you can get something for that price in those two neighborhoods. Whereas in town and out on the west side, you're pretty much going to be looking a million up. And if you look at some of the properties that offer vineyards, those can climb all the way up close to 10 million for the larger properties. And just like we described the Tascadero being more hilly and wooded on the west side and more flat and rolling on the south and the east, that's what you're going to find here in Paso too. And just outside of Paso, San Miguel and Shandon offer gorgeous ranch property too. Okay, two more neighborhoods to go, but both are smaller, so we'll go through a little bit more quickly. Templeton, we have similar pricing to West Paso, whether you're in East or West Templeton. Lot sizes can be one acre or 100 acres. Properties we're showing you here are a seven acre property with a large fixer for just over 1 million and over 200 acres of vineyard property with a Mediterranean house that we sold for 2.5. And our last neighborhood for the neighborhood part of this video, neighborhood, is Santa Margarita. Santa Margarita has some of the most rugged country that we have here in the North County of San Luis Obispo, really oh, yeah. all of San Luis Obispo County. And you can drive from the little town of Santa Margarita for an hour and you're still in Santa Margarita. So the price is very quiet a bit depending on how close you are into town. You can find something for 600000 here or all the way up into the millions as well. We recently represented some energetic first-time buyers that had a furry and feathered family and they were looking for a property with some land that was also affordable and they could get into the market here. Out on Park Hill Road, we found them a 20-acre property with a really cute manufactured home and they were able to secure that for less than 700000 now they're all moved in, all their animals have moved in, they're adding more, and they're living out their ranch dreams today. Okay, moving on from neighborhoods, let's talk about water. Will you have water? We just showed you 10 of our recent listings in the drone footage about neighborhoods. Four of 10 of those had a water meter. So it is pretty common to see acreage properties with a water meter. It's true. So the other six of those 10 properties do indeed have wells. And people ask us all the time when they're buying a property with a well, will I have water? And the answer to that is generally going to be yes. And even if you do buy a property with a water meter, the water still comes from the city wells in those circumstances. There is plenty of water here. Of course, California has been going through drought for many years. But usually the only time we run into people running out of water with their wells is when the well has been dug too shallow or the exception of Santa Margarita. There is a lot of granite rock out there which can make it difficult for a drill bit to get through. So during the summer, a lot of the properties out there do have to have water trucked in. So we could do a whole three hour long video just about water. But for the most part, you're going to have water, and if you have questions, just ask them. Okay, now equally as important as water, at least it <laughs> seems that way sometimes, internet. What are people going to do about internet? So when there isn't cable or fiber optic to the property, our ranch properties around here will have either ranch Wi-Fi or SurfNet or Wilson Creek. Those are going to typically give you fast enough internet for streaming and zooming and those types of things. But if you do need really high speed internet, you're either going to want to make sure that the property has Spectrum or AT&T or you can go Starlink. Now, just sold our first property that had Starlink connected and it was getting a 200 megabyte per minute downloading speed. Not bad. Okay, rounding out ranch utilities is the septic or sewer. And with those 10 properties that we showed you the drone footage of, only one was connected to sewer. And that was the one that was in town past Robles. And our clients wonder, is it gonna cost me more to have a septic tank than it costs me to be on sewer? So in most cases, no, it is not gonna cost you any more to have a septic system. There are a couple more things to be aware of having a septic, but really when it comes down to there's still a little bit more maintenance that you have to do maybe every three to five years. It costs a lot of money to get a septic system installed, but once it's there, it's gonna probably last you for at least 25 years. So the answer to that question is, when it comes to cost, it's really kind of the same thing. And we experienced sewer costing us more than septic at our last property. It was a long driveway that went into a sump pump and then back up to the street after that. 
and there was a lot involved in maintaining that long line out to the street and the sump pump itself. Plus, we had the sewer assessment, and when you're on septic, you don't have a sewer assessment. Okay, we are rounding out our video talking about maintenance of weeds, fences, and a few tips on wildlife. Acreage properties do require maintenance, but it can indeed be fun. You have room for gardens, orchards, and chickens, all things I really do love. You will need to cut your weeds up to a few times a year, and whether you're trying to keep deer out or your dogs and other animals in, from time to time you will need some fencing maintenance. Deer fencing can require a little bit of maintenance on an annual basis, and then after it's been in use for decades, you can have to replace it completely. Wildlife can also be a blessing and a curse. Yes, it's fun to watch little bunnies hop around and the deer when they're off in the distance, birds chirping, but you do also get more bugs than you will find in the city and rodents and squirrels and all kinds of little critters. So if you do have dogs and cats, you probably won't need any rodent control. But if you're on acreage property and you don't have dogs and cats, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a pest control guy on speed dial so that you can call him in when you need a treatment. Another pesky animal around here is a skunk. Now, fortunately, you're not gonna have skunks roaming around your property every day, but every now and then, if your dog ventures off into the woods of your 100-acre parcel and meets a skunk face-to-face, -face, you're gonna have skunk smell right up in your face, and it's terrible. Colin, how many times have you had a dog with a close encounter with a skunk? Um, more times than I want to remember. <laughs> I think I'm at a count of about four. So living here for, I, how long have I lived here? 50, 50 years. years. <laughs> for once a decade, a dog gets sprayed in the face by a skunk. And then rounding out our video, we just wanted to mention that a lot of our clients come to us with the dream of having 40 acres or 50 acres, maybe even 20 acres, and then find out that you really only want one or two. So that's perfectly normal. So part of the process of buying your first ranch is come into town for the properties and get a feel for the size of the property that you really like. There is an exception from time to time. I have some clients that moved up from Southern California. They purchased 58 acres and they just keep adding animals. They have horses, they have cows, they have chickens, dogs, cats. I don't even know what else. So no matter what the size is of your ranch dream or if you don't know yet, we're here to help you work through that and make your ranch dreams come true. If you want to know more about moving to our area, we do have a handy dandy little relocation guide and it's down below in the description. Click it and save it. It's a pretty great little guide if I do say so it's myself great. and totally free. So make sure you click and stay tuned for our next video. And as always, thanks for watching.